Hello everyone, it's been a while. Um, Christmas break just started. I've been gone for like, what, three months? So here's what I've been working on. This is my project one from this year, which is in the first term. And I'm gonna give you a little presentation. It's gonna take 10 minutes and it's exactly what I presented to my tutors and my program directors to get graded on this. So I hope you guys enjoy. This is what I've been working on um, all this time. So have a look with me. Hello everyone, my name is Kelvin. I'm a third year student from Unit 7, and I'm here to present to you my project, 2084, A Space Odyssey. This project reinterprets upon past theories and predictions of technology in the world today, to speculate on the built environment of the future as a combination of both science fictional and existing technology. Following on from this, chapter one explores the hypothetical events that lead to the focus of this project, the year 2084. This project begins with a modern interpretation of George Orwell's renowned dystopian piece, 1984. The novel was published 40 years prior to its title, and is based on Orwell's vision of the future. It suggests the possibility of a totalitarian world state that is governed through mass surveillance, spy technology, and propaganda, which are administrated by the four ministries. The depiction of Orwell's four ministries are infused with 1970s concepts of tracking devices, informed by designer and sculptor Panamarenko and Francois de la Rosier. The four designs explore the visualization of the four ministries, guided by their specific programs and needs. In an effort to attach the 1984 designs to the real world, the initial depictions iterative, 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 the initial depictions iteratively, the initial depictions, iter, the initial depictions iteratively evolved in accordance with the technology. The initial depictions iteratively evolved in accordance with the technological advancements of each decade. In reference to the theme of mass surveillance from the book, the first generation of real-world observational satellites released throughout the 50s and 80s informed the initial design evolution of the ministries. Sputnik 1 was the first ever artificial Earth satellite launched into space. The design of the first ministry focused on communication between Earth and space. The hexagons were a series of photographic reconnaissance satellites deployed in the 70s. The design of the second ministry took on its elements of ground-focused surveillance. New Star is the first X-ray telescope deployed into space. Its primary mission is star and black hole observation, which informed the third design. In the interest of the world state's development of Earth-focused surveillance technology, the second design informed by the hexagon became the first mass surveillance satellite launched into low Earth orbit in the year 1984, named after Orwell himself. Exactly one decade later, Orwell 1 is replaced by its second generation informed by the International Space Station, which allowed for space and habitation, and by Skylab, which was the first data storage satellite sent into Earth's orbit. The onboard research facility of Orwell 2 permitted real-time footage analysis and the remote storage of valuable data and films safe from any apocalyptic events on Earth. Orwell 2 was deployed in 1994 from the Kennedy Space Center into medium Earth orbit at an altitude of 6,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Its key components included the data storage unit shown on the top left of the page informed by Skylab the gravity chamber slash living quarter informed by the ISS, as well as the solar arrays that assisted in subsidizing for the crew members' electricity usage. This first photo of Orwell 2 was taken by the Hubble telescope on its scheduled approach to the imaging satellite. In the same year, the second photo of Orwell 2 was captured by the European Southern Observatory located in Munich, Germany. The final photo of the satellite was also taken by the same observatory on Orwell 2's closest approach to Earth on December 2nd, 1994. The third generation of the Orwells was completed in year 2001 and takes inspiration from Stanley Kubrick's sci-fi film, 2001 A Space Odyssey, released in 1968. The film follows the voyage of two pilots and their AI-controlled spacecraft that goes haywire. The film deals with similar themes as 1984 such as technology, evolution, and artificial intelligence. The study focused on the main spacecraft, Discovery 1, which houses the AI unit capable of decision-making and self-maintenance. The spacecraft carries its counterpart named Sentinel-1, which is in charge of the physical maintenance duties. 
OL3 was launched on January 1st in 2001 into high Earth geostationary orbit at the altitude of 36,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Its key components included the mechanical appendages for self-maintenance and AI control housing unit derived from NASA in 2001 Space Odyssey, as well as the star trackers which calculated the precise location of the satellite based on the star movements to fade to feed into the AI. This first photograph was sent back to Earth by the Hubble two months into Orwell's mission. This second shot of Orwell 3 was on its fifth year launch anniversary in the year 2006. Chapter two of the project is set 60 years from now and speculates on our future generation's interactions with Orwell 3. As of right now, there are over 5,000 satellites in orbit with over half of them either retired or abandoned due to program errors. The main cause of satellite malfunction stems from the encounters with solar flares. A solar flare occurs when the sun launches charged particles, x-rays, and other radiations towards Earth. Although the Earth's magnetosphere can divert most of the particles, some still penetrate through to contact orbiting satellites, either killing or resetting them. This graph documents solar flares that occurred since the 1700s, as well as their magnitudes. The most powerful event was documented in 1862 by scientists Richard Carrington and Richard Hodgson. The event generated aurora lights that were visible all the way from Hawaii. Based on the frequency of solar flares deduced from past data, it is predicted that the next solar flare that can match up to the Carrington event will likely occur within the next 50 years. On the 14th of April, 2084, during the 26th solar cycle, a second large scale solar event hits Earth named after the Carrington event's second discoverer, Richard Hodgson. The Hodgson event causes Orwell 3 to derail from its orbit due to navigation system malfunction. The gravitational pull of Earth brings the satellite back into the Earth's atmosphere, causing its re-entry. During this process, much of Orwell 3's small-scale components are incinerated, while the large-scale components disintegrate due to their varying masses. Pieces of the satellite scatter across the continents with the smallest one located in London, UK. Larger components are first discovered in Natal, Brazil. The US is able to claim a piece of their own two weeks after the impact, and the fragment is stored within the NASA Vehicle Assembly Building. Although rough coordinates of the landing locations can be calculated, the exact sites remain confidential to the public due to research purposes. The discovery of the largest Orwell III remnant is announced by Russia almost two months after the event, with a fragment reminiscent of the Skylab's vintage data storage unit. Very soon, InkSoc, a cross-national organization, is formed on the collective effort of the countries to reassemble and reunite the fragments of Orwell III. The name InkSoc is taken from the totalitarian government illustrated in 1984. Inspired by artist James Terrell's celestial light display set in the center of a volcano crater, the unification site finds itself at the rodent crater situated in White Pine, Nevada. The transportation of the fragments take place on August 23rd of 2084, utilizing multiple methods of conveyance such as the crawler transporters and the guppy aircrafts due to the varying sizes and shapes of the pieces. Named after the solar flare event, the Hodgson Center is designed for the restoration, reassembly, and display of Orwell 3. The pieces arrive at the center just past midnight. Each dome-shaped chamber is responsible for the storage and restoration of a singular fragment, with the main one catered to the collective display of the satellite. The design of the facilities are informed by the Japanese flood prevention tunnels, who the locals refer to as the Giant's Underground Palace due to its massive size. The specifications of Orwell 3's data extraction process is guided by Facebook's data headquarters located in Sweden. Facility B02 facilitates fragment 03 and 05 with restoration and data extraction sentinels fitted on the left and right of the photograph, each one catered to the shape of a specific piece of debris. The storage of individual fragments happen within the hangars. Hangar 1 is visible from the exterior of Hudson Center and houses fragment 03. Its main duty is to strict prevention of the fragments through the means of temperature and humidity regulation. The main exhibition is the largest space within the center, it is located in facility A01 and is open for viewing at the specific times of the year during solar events. Anyone who visits is required to dress in a hazmat suit in order to prevent damage to the remnants of the largest ever surveillance satellite.
The final photograph of the facility shows the restoration of Fragment 03 and concludes the project, 2084, A Space Odyssey.